Hi, I'm Stu McKamey of the USDA Systematic Entomology Lab. In this section, we're going to use the OMEN 1933 key to species of Agalia. You have a handout for that. And first, I will show you why it is, how you know it's Agalia, briefly. Agaliopsis differs, or it's not Agaliopsis, I should say, because this is evenly, this evenly follows the back of the head, evenly follows the line of the eye. In Agaliopsis, it extends behind the eye a little bit, so you can see even right behind the eye, you can see part of the vertex. It is not, the pronotum has a fairly thick midline and has more than spots. It has some fuscous areas. It is not coarsely pitted and, uh, or transversely rigulose. And that pretty much narrows it down to a gallia. So now looking at the key. In couplet one, let's get a full view of it here. I'm, I'm sorry, the, uh, the midline here, the midline of the pronotum is, can be present or absent. And there can also be spots or not spots. But um, So in couplet one, species typically black and yellow or blackish green definitely does not fit, and th that's only West Indian species. You see at the end of the, that couplet. And species not is above, so we go to four. In couplet four, we have elytra, which means four wings, reticulately veined or not. Here you see if not, there's this sort of a standard number of veins. You don't have to count them. You just It's not veins all over. So like uh, not reticulate leads us to a couple at five. And it, uh, species large brown oval black spot on the vertex above each of cells in two spots approximately the same size and shape directly behind these. That is not the case. Again, show you a dorsal view. It just, uh, it's, a very, it's a very complex set of characters there and, uh, and it doesn't fit pretty much any of them. But it can fit some and still, if it doesn't fit them all, then unless it says caveat that sometimes, then you shouldn't follow that key. So we just go to species with coloring not as above. We skip all the way to 26, which is at the bottom of the second page. Couple at 26. Species heavily marked with black over most of the dorsal surface. Again, not the case here. Pretty clear and tawny, grass colored. So color not is above. We now jump to 36. All right, couple of 36, we have species having a pair of round, black, or fusca spots on the vertex above the ocelli. Let's look at the ocelli, which are, again, on the face. These are the ocelli. And these are the black spots above it. So it has them. So instead of Delita, we go to couple of 37. Pronotal markings. This is couple of 37. So we have to look at dorsal view again. And I'd like to insert here, there, there are some uh, mounts for, for, uh, for pin specimens, pin mounts, that, you, that are available. But because you have to change views so often, I find a cork or clay much more useful. 
So pronotal markings consisting of a broad median line. Zoom up on the pronotum. This counts as a broad median line. A broad median line. Um, and one or more spots on the side of this. And marking sometimes almost oddly. So if it were clear, or almost clear, that would also fall under this first part of the couplet. And just we, even though it seemed to fit everything in that in the first part, we should still read the second part just to make sure it doesn't fit there. Pronotal markings consisting of spots only. Well, there's some fuscous areas here that aren't really spots, um, or and they are not fused into one large marking. The median line is broad, so it's not narrow. And uh, so it doesn't fit the second part. So we go to third couplet 38. 38, this is a male. Let me show you um, an undissected male. I'll show you a male and a female. This is a male. You can see that the terminal segment is small and these this is looking on the underside and these are the subgenital plates. It doesn't occupy very much of the abdomen versus a female. And the female, the ovipositor, is long, takes up a, oftentimes a third or a half of the pronotum. But we're going to work with the male. So working with males, this is couplet 38, takes us to couplet 39. Male plates elongate, longer than the basal width. So let's look at male again. Okay, so here's a close-up of the subgenital plates, and you can see it's about as long as wide. This is couplet 39. It's definitely not longer than the basal width. In this view, it actually looks a little bit shorter because it's not a perfectly ventral view. This is turned up a little bit, but it's certainly not longer than the basal width. So it's not configurata. So instead, we go to couplet 40, where the length barely equals the basal width, with the length versus the basal width. Couplet 40, we have to look at the EDAS. And oftentimes, uh, you have to look at the EDAS earlier. Um, let me um, mention that the males and the females that, that I pointed out, there's one genus where it's exactly the opposite. In Acrogonia, a sharpshooter uh, that is also includes some vectors of citrus chlorosis in Brazil, the female has a very short terminal segment, and the male has a long one. But in everything else, the if it, there's a a long, there's an obvious long ovipositor in the leaf hoppers. So now looking at the Ediagus, couplet 40. This is the last segment of the abdomen, called the pigifer and the anal segments. This is the pigifer and the anal segments. This is where it was detached. The pigifer was detached. These are the anal segments here. So to make this dorsal ventral. Sorry for this shaking. More like that. And so we go to couplet 40. Ediagus short and stout. 
or exceedingly long and slender. side view for this usually. And it's not this not the darkest not the darkest structure here, but this structure here. You can see it's long and slender. So it, so this is albigula. I should point out that you have the PDF of this publication, so you can key uh, genera and species, but the better key for genera is a Kramer 1964 paper that is easily accessible. You have the citation for it uh, in one of the other presentations. 